and welcome to a brand new season of Inside the Hoop. Excited to be back. I'm Kim Christofferson from Kimberbell, and I've got my friends here, Ginger McLeod and Deanna Lindley. Hey, How are you guys? Good. How so are good. you? It's been a while. It, it has. has. <laughs> Longer than we knew. Yeah. yeah. About three months a while. Right? Yeah. <laughs> a lot has happened. A yes. lot has happened, including, do you see what we Look have here? Brand new set. Brand new set. Amazing. We are so thrilled mm -hmm. for all the work and the time and the energy and you name it that went into producing this beautiful new set. A big shout out to the team behind the scenes that made this happen. Yes, yes. for sure. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's yep. So it was fantastic. even above our highest expectations. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, they had this idea, they're like, what if we got a 3D printer yes. and we made all of these hoops? Do, I mean, I want all these hoops just even in my own sewing room. Right? right? We all need a wall like this. <laughs> Some for scissors sure. hanging around when I'm always looking for the scissors. Right? right? Yeah, it's, it's just gorgeous. beautiful. And so I thought it would be fun to share with you out there a little bit more on the behind the scenes yes. of what it took to make this happen. Let's take a look. so much has happened in these last three months and March is here which also means a changing of the seasons right right, right exactly so you know we're going into springtime and what better time to talk about a brand new feature quilt here at Kimberbell called quilting through the seasons have you guys had a chance to take a look at that yet yes yes we have beautiful yeah it I is love that it's gorgeous it really is what do you love about it I love the size. Okay. It's a great size for me to hang in my entryway that's yes. just like this awkward little wall that it will just fit there, that a standard quilt wouldn't fit. You know what? That is so true because we all have, you know, just so much wall space mm -hmm. um, in our homes, but it is the it is a great size. I believe it's about a 20 by 60 inch if you haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. um, let's go ahead and take a look at some images uh, here on the screen so you can see truly how beautiful it is. Deanna, while we're looking at those things, what are some of the things that you like about this they quilt? They showed the picture that I wanted to talk about first. I love those little banners. That was one of my favorite things. And yeah. all the interchangeable pieces. I love the idea that I can make one quilt. Yes. I can have it up all year and just change it out with the seasons. That was speaking my language. <laughs> yes. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, the banner, the blocks, all of the interchangeable elements, like even the flowers in that vase mm -hmm. and the Yes. flowers on the, the wreath. Yes. It all changes depending on the season yes. with just a few little, you know, change outs with some Velcro mm -hmm. and right. some buttons. Uh, you can see there even the images of the little pieced blocks, which I, I can and see, the Ginger, you had mm -hmm. something to do with that for this episode. Um, they're like little mini quilts that you attach yes. to the to the main quilt, mm -hmm. and thus you're changing it up for every season. Yep. yep. It adds, I love like the neutral palette of the quilt, mm -hmm. and then just those little tiny elements just add fun little pops of color to mm -hmm. just bring in fun oh right. for the seasons. Right. Yeah, and it. look at that gorgeous quilting on there too. It's I know. so beautiful. I know. Can you believe that's all done on the embroidery machine? I can't. I, I can't. It's, it's hard for my brain to even mm -hmm. fathom that yeah. you can do that entire thing mm -hmm. in fact, the hoop. My favorite background quilting is the like the words. Oh yes, the, the text print, the text, right? Yes, it's so fun. Yeah, I absolutely love that. For me, I would say it's the definitely the text, like you said, and I think a close runner-up would be those leaves because oh. I can see mm -hmm. using that for all year long. 
right. yes, for so different yeah, projects. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Well, speaking of different projects that yeah. you can do with this quilt. Okay, should we talk about today's episode? You, yeah, All go right. for it. So today we are doing a one, two, three challenge. Ooh. And so our goal is to kind of stretch our creative muscles and use some of these designs from Quilting Through the Seasons in a new and different way. Yeah. So... Well, we hope it's inspiring yeah. for you, right? Because there is, you know, certainly the idea that you, you make the quilt just exactly as intended, mm -hmm. but there's so many more projects. There's so many possibilities that you can do with it. And we're gonna show you today what we do. That's yeah. right. In fact, our challenge was super simple. We each picked a part of the quilt that we enjoyed or really liked, <laughs> and we created it in a little bit different way so that we could use it in other areas of our home. All right, yep. so. All right. Okay, are you guys Deanna, ready for the reveal? Yeah, go for it. What did you choose? Well, I chose the wreath. Ah, But I, love I it. cut it out, cut out the block, and I just put it in this simple frame. We have a link so that you can purchase these frames if you want. Just oh, so you good. know, it came in a pack of four. Oh, nice. <laughs> so you Perfect. have one for every season if yeah. you want, or you could interchange it. Yeah. I just thought, oh, it'd be so easy to just have each block in here and. Anyway, super so, simple. Mm -hmm. So Deanna, this is a block, and for everyone out there watching, this is a block that's found in the top left corner of the quilt itself. And right. it certainly is beautiful there, but I love that you framed it. I love it too. Just thought this would be a fun way to, and if you wanted to, you could just get a single frame and then just simply- ah, look at that. Change out Change the out the pieces just as quickly and easily. Just like the quilt. Yeah. I love that you didn't put the glass over it so that you yeah, could see Yeah, I wanted the dimensional look. Yeah, I wanted I it. I like it. that the flowers can hang over a little bit. The bow can even be just outside the frame edges. So that is I wanted it to really pop and be cute. dimensional. Oh my Very gosh, fun. I absolutely Ooh. adore that. And then on the back, you've got a little stand. It so does have a little kickstand, yeah. Okay. Or so you can hang them on the wall. Yep, you can hang them on the wall. It might be fun to just have all four seasons up there. Right. Oh, that's, that's a fun, that would be a fun little, like, new home gift, I think. Absolutely. It would be a, a great gift for someone that had and just a, a, little a small little thing. So yeah. it would be easy to prop up on a table uh -huh. or, like you said, hang it displayed on the wall. Yeah. So lots of options. It. Well, and the winter one is so adorable too. Let's take a look at that image. We've got the winter block is full of more wintry flowers, so mm -hmm. to speak, and even little snowflakes in there, yes. right? Oh my gosh. I love, it. I love that. And the fall is all about the pumpkin. Yes. And you know, I'm a pumpkin girl. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great idea. Just really simple and, and uh, effective immediately. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I love it. Thank and, you. And, uh, you know, a simple little block to pull out. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Okay. Yep. Well, that was number one idea. Yeah. Absolutely adorable in every way. So Kim, okay. you're up next. I'm what up did next. you do? Okay. Well, I fell in love with the little birdie block. Let's take a look at what that looks like here on the screen. This is the original bird block. I love the colors. I love the quilting behind it. And I knew I had to do something with that. So here's what I did um, in addition to it. Uh, in, in addition to the quilt, I should say, and that is I took one of our Kimberbell tote bags and I made four identical blocks of quilt blocks there with the little birdie. I just switched out the colors to be anything from the taupe to the black to the cream and gray um, just to... I don't know, give it a little bit more of a neutral look to this bag. I used our Kimberbell uh, tote to, to do this, but I took it one step further on this tote and actually quilted it with one of the background quilting designs that um, is an optional uh, download at Kimberbell. I love it. So it just there you added go. a little love. extra flair to so it. A little yeah. flair and is going on. the background quilting part of the quilting bundle for Quilting Through the Seasons? It is. It love is. It. And I wanted you all out there to see that when you download any of these background quilting designs, you can use them 
for so much more beyond just the quilt itself. Absolutely. And as you can Love see, it. it just creates an all over look. And then I also box the corners, which we do have a tutorial out there for. We'll make sure and link it here mm -hmm. on how I box the corners as well as how I lined the inside of the tote. So to you know, give you an idea of how all this is done, how I used the clear blue tiles method to quilt this, and then to line it, we're gonna take a look at a little video that I did from my sewing room. Okay. All right, so I have the challenge to take one of the blocks from Quilting Through the Seasons and do something different with it. So I decided on that darling little bird block. And I actually made three of them because they were just so darn cute. But then I thought, well, what could I do with it? Well, the tote bag, the lined tote bag is what I want to do. So in order to do that, I decided to take a, a pre-done, already made Kimberville tote. As you know, they come with the side seams opened. You have a little um, edge, surged edge here, so it's not gonna fray. And then you've got your handles sewn on each side. But in order to match the quilting or coordinate the quilting, and thickness of these blocks with this, I decided how cute would it be if I actually quilted the entire tote first. And then I placed the blocks inside the tote. Let me show you what I'm talking about. To quilt this tote, I actually started out by just making a quilt sandwich, just like you would do with a regular quilt. As you can see here, I have my backing fabric I have a piece of our Kimberbell project batting, and then I place the toe on top, all right? Now from there, I taped around, you know, the edges. I took this off here just so that you could see it, but I taped the edges down, and now I've got the perfect quilt sandwich to use uh, my clear blue tiles on for background quilting. And I use the design files from the background quilting download that is an optional uh, download available for quilting through the seasons. But as you can see, you can use that background quilting for anything, including this tote. So once I did that, I needed to mark the, the tote with uh, my clear blue tiles. So let me show you how I did that real quick. Just with this blank tote, I'm gonna lay this down with the right side facing up, and then I'm gonna use my clear blue tile. Now you can use any size of tile, that's what's so great about them, is whatever size hoop you have, use that tile that fits it. For me, I have a little bit larger of a hoop, so I can use the larger tiles, but it's certainly not necessary. I could even do something really small, like this, or even smaller, but it's all gonna look the same because the designs are the same scale, which is awesome. So if I'm pretending like this is like a quilt, although it's a tote, I'm just gonna place one of these tiles down. So what I can do is actually just place this blue tile wherever I want the design of the background quilting to land. So therefore, in this case, I don't want to quilt into this area. I just think it's too thick in this space because of the handles, and this line gives me the perfect edge to start with. So I'm going to place my first tile down, and then I'm going to mark my center point just like we do with clear blue tiles. And then I can mark all the way across, but I really don't need to. I can just do a few little markings here, a little bit, about an inch on each side. And then I want to remember what size of tile I used. So in order to do that, I'm gonna take the eight by 14 right here, and I'm gonna write eight whoops, by 14 here, okay? That way, when I go to remove this, I will know what file size to bring up on my machine. Pretty simple, right? Now beyond that, I also want to know where this tile ended. So there's these little blue marks that I'm going to mark just around the corner here, so that when I go to lift this tile up, I will know where to place it next. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about the edges here because uh, the edges will be sewn in and I'm just going to match it up to the next uh, little marking with my tile. 
okay? So I'm done marking this. I've done my center point, I've done a few little crosshairs. I marked my uh, size of file that I wanna pull up, and I've marked my little edges. Now I can lift this up just like you would a stamp and place it right next to it. How do I know where to place it? Well, I marked those little marks right there. So I can line this up right next to it, side by side, and then do it all over again. Again, this is an 18, eight by 14. I'm going to put a little dot in the middle, my little sides. I'm gonna write eight by 14, okay? And then I'm going to do my little series of markings. All right, I've done it. Now I can do that again. And I can continue this process until the whole tote is marked. But what if I get to an area that is smaller than what my tile is? No big deal, you could certainly quilt over your toe on the edge, because it's all gonna be trimmed up anyway. Or I could take maybe smaller tiles and fit it in that area. It's up to you. So for example, this one was right here. Remember, it ended right there. And I could take, I've got this space to fill, right? Well, good thing I've got a six by 14 unlike my eight by 14, because look how well it fits right there. Again, if I think about where the quilting is gonna land, it's gotta go right underneath this blue area, then I'm gonna place this right here because I don't want it, for me, I personally don't want to quilt on this top edge. So look how nicely that lines up. I can just mark, okay, and once again, I'm gonna now mark the six by 14 on here so that when I go to take it to my machine, I know what file size to pull up. Lift it up and place it again and continue on. So you continue this process until, like I said, it's all marked. Wonderful. From there, you will make that quilt sandwich that I talked about with your backing, your batting, and then this on top. So here we are. I've already done it. And uh, don't forget that when you do your quilt sandwich, you're also gonna tape down the edges. You just don't want your presser foot to go over there and lift up your fabric. That's, that's no good, right? And as you can see, this background fabric is a lot larger than uh, the project itself. That's really nice because when you go to hoop this, uh, you'll have plenty of extra fabric to extend from one side of the hoop to the next side of the hoop. Now, if your backing fabric doesn't extend all the way, you can certainly like sew on an extra strip of fabric so that it extends. The nice thing is we don't have to use any stabilizer at this point. It's all going to be um, just fine by just using your backing, your batting, and then your top. All right, so let me go, go ahead and show you how I hooped this, and then I'll pull the design up on the machine, and uh, we'll be ready to go from there. So I place my backing, brace for the pieces. So now that you have your quilt sandwich, let's put the bottom hoop below it. Then we'll take our top hoop. If you happen to have one of these plastic template grids, be sure to get it out. It's a great way for centering. If you don't have that, we do have a YouTube tutorial that we can link to that will help you find the center. Or some machines um, have camera features that can also help. So there's lots of options if you don't have uh, the template grid. But what I want to do is set, make sure that that center point of the template grid lands on the center point of um, my mark, my first marking. Ah, perfect, right there, smack in the center. The little crosshairs also go perfectly right there. This is gonna be fantastic. Let's take it to the machine, pull up the eight by 14 file size and start quilting. All right, so I wanna pull up the clear blue tile design for floral eight, so I'm gonna press that. Make sure that if you have two options, whether block by block or clear blue tiles, if you're using clear blue tiles, make sure you pull up the right file, okay? Now I want to find the eight by 14 size. 
and it will tell me right here. There it is. All right, and hit set, embroider, and now I'm ready to go. If you get to this point where your needle doesn't exactly drop in the center, it's okay to shift to that needle, and you can do that on your machine settings, just so that it lands right on that dot. And so that's what I'm gonna do real quick. Okay, let's go. All right, so as you can see, um, it's done. It's so beautiful, isn't it? And because of the system of clear blue tiles, you really can't see where one tile started and one tile ended. It's fantastic. So now I wanna trim this up. I wanna trim it to the exact same size as the tote itself. So go ahead and remove that tape, get out that ruler and rotary cutter and trim away. Just make sure that you don't accidentally trim off your handle. All right, so I've trimmed away all the extra backing. I have a little bit of tape here on the sides. You can remove it or it would be sewn into the seam, so no big deal. Um, but now I've gotta put these bird blocks in there somehow. So how am I gonna do it? Well, we're gonna learn together. I'm guessing, I'm kinda thinking right now that I wanna measure down a few inches. You know what, I am just gonna wing it here and say, you know what, I think it would look good about right there. <laughs> so I'm gonna go down, oh, we'll say about five inches. All right, and I'm gonna separate these. Oh, I'm nervous. <laughs> then I will insert these blocks somehow. Okay, ooh, I'm liking what I've seen so far. I've got some blank blocks here, so either I'll make two more birds, or maybe I'll just make some quilted blocks. I'm not sure, we'll see. And then sew this together as a strip. Once that strip is sewn, then I can sew this strip back with a handle. I can sew this strip back, and then go on to the point where I actually um, make this into a full-on tote with boxed corners and I'm even going to do a lining because I don't want, um, you know, the, the seams to show inside. I want it to be beautifully lined. And how am I going to do that? Well, I've got a tutorial for you. So check out the tutorial, either here or here. <laughs> I don't know. And see how I line any kind of Kimberbell tote very quickly and easily. You know, make sure when you go to line this toe, you're sewing it all together, you will have some extra bulky seams right where those straps are. So you're going to want to go slow and possibly use a walking foot, but I explain that all in that video on how you can take any design, any uh, tote bag, and put a lining into it. Stay tuned for Inside the Hoof where I will show you the finished bag. See ya! All right, so I've sewn together my final little bird strip here that I'm going to be inserting into uh, the tote on each side. Uh, once I sew that together, then I'm gonna be ready to actually line my tote. But one thing I wanna remember to do before I go into that lining stage is actually remove any of this extra bulk uh, that was done when I had put the quilting on top of it. So remember that we actually placed our clear blue tiles right below this top hem. And the reason why I wanted to do that is I want my quilting to start below that top hem and not over this area because it's just extra bulky because of those straps. Well, in addition to that, I don't want the extra bulk behind the straps as well. It's just gonna make it that much harder to sew it all together when we put in our lining. So I'm going to, uh, just take this uh, project batting and the backing and simply trim it away. Now, I certainly could do that with a rotary cutter, but I wanna be really extra careful here that I don't accidentally uh, cut into the tote. So instead, I'm just gonna use a pair of scissors here and slowly but surely trim away that extra bulk. 
Once you do it on this side, just make sure to do it on the other side as well. And then you'll be ready to sew this all together, add your lining um, as outlined in my video, and uh, you'll have a fully lined tote. Oh my goodness, okay, Kim, so that was really amazing. Really it's a fun little so... look to add a little something extra with the quilting yes, to a tote bag. I yes. know. Okay, so I love what you said about <laughs> making sure to use the scissors when you trim. Because... <laughs> can I tell you why? Yes, you can tell us why. Can we why. all have like just a little honest heart-to-heart -heart conversation Absolutely. here, my friends? Okay, so in that video, you did see at the end that I mentioned, you know what, when you go to trim away your extra batting and the backing on this, um, that you probably should use scissors instead of a rotary cutter. That's because I made the mistake of first using a rotary cutter and a ruler. And yes, indeed, my friends, I cut a little tiny slit in there, oh, no. almost cutting off my handle. And that was a, like a dumb moment, you know? And so I'm telling you all right now, use scissors to trim away <laughs> that extra little batting so you don't have the bulk. And then, you know, why not tell you how I fixed it, right? Because if you happen to do that too, yep. and it happens to all of us. It's right? not the end of the world. It's, it's no big deal. Just a little bit of a little zigzag stitch to, to close up that little hole, put a little bit of fray check on top, and then here's my favorite little tip. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. Put a beautiful big flower over it so no one sees <laughs> that you made a little insy bitsy uh, mistake. And how cute is that flower? Adorable. Right? I love it. No one would ever know. So you could put a button over it. You could put a flower over it. I think the flower just alone would be a cute addition to mm -hmm. add Absolutely. to that. Absolutely. But that's what I'm doing. I like it. I like uh, with it. This very one. Fun. So, very there you fun. go. I also really like how <laughs> the inside fabric just has that little peak out the edge. Oh, Tell me yeah. a little bit more about how you did that. Yeah, that little hem up at the, above the top there, it's just, you're, you're right. It's that little peak of fabric because, yes, the fabric is so cute inside, but now it creates a little bit of a lined edge along the top. Mm -hmm. um, definitely because it's so cute, but also it's fun. Functional because when you go to sew this lining um, inside the bag and you do a top stitch, it does become quite bulky when you go over those handles. So by just gently folding it over the top edge, you're going to have less bulk there to sew over. And like you said, Deanna, it's just really just, cute. It is. It is. Right? It's very Darling. Fun. So I love there that. you have it. I love yeah, it. Yeah. So Make sure and check out the extra tutorial that we're gonna put a link to here on how to line any tote, whether it be a Kimberbell tote or just any tote out there. If you wanna put some extra cute fabric inside, I've got a, a really quick and easy tutorial on how to do that, plus how to box, box those corners. corners. It just really makes a nor uh, ordinary bag that you can pick up anywhere yours yeah. and personalized yeah, and different. Definitely. I like that. All, All right, extra so special. I love it. are okay. you ready for a really fun gift? away yes well this was you know our our gal here um, at Kimberbell Caitlin behind the scenes she said you know what wouldn't that be fun to actually give this bag away to someone out there watching this he said yes, oh, I love yes. It. definitely I promise when you get the bag you'll also get the flower <laughs> <laughs> you get a Kim special <laughs> there you go so there you have it we're going to give this away and what we want you to do on this post wherever you see this video whether it's on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube mm -hmm. wherever you see it go ahead and make a post about what block from the quilting through the seasons would you take out of there pull out of there and make something different with right yeah. so it could be any of these projects we're talking about today but it could be a whole nother block yeah. that you that may have caught your eye let us know in yeah. the comments and someone out there is going to win this actual tote bag can ginger oh. and i enter <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, so darling very, very fun i love right. it
So I love it. We'll put all the details uh, on our on our website for sure. Yes, I perfect. Love it. Okay, all Ginger. Right, so all Ginger, right. you guys ready? Your turn. Yes. Okay. Well, I took the cute little mini quilts. So this is the little pumpkin mini quilt, and I used our 18 by 18 pillow cover, but I cut it down. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like it's it. It's so I cute. I used our orange pop rulers and I cut it down. I left the zipper in the bottom and just cut it down. So you could do that. You could make your own pillow cover, whatever you want. But I thought that that would just be a really fun little addition. And so if I'm gonna hang this in my entryway, then I can use this yeah. along with my save the date pillows. Oh, how there cute. To put those all together right there in my entryway. I love it. Oh, I love Won't that. Won't that be so fun? Oh my gosh, what a great so cute. idea. And then you can just interchange that with the seasons and then with your yeah. Save the date pillows as well. Go ahead and unbutton that so they can so see. This just that just comes off. right off. That's fantastic. And then you can just change it out for the seasons. I love it. Oh my gosh, lots of possibilities mm -hmm. with that one. Yeah, so and many now fun. You, now your Save the Date pillow has a little buddy. It does. <laughs> right? We like buddies. Here. And it matches my cute little quilt that will hang in my entryway. So yeah. it'll just pull it all together. Yeah. Can you believe? It's a wrap, guys. Oh, we goodness. finished up our first episode of the official new season of Inside the Hoop. Stay tuned for every week because, you know, we're going to be sharing all kinds of goodness every Thursday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, you name it. Um, we, yep. are we are back. Yep. We are back. Weird. Definitely. It's so good to be back with it you guys. Is. It's really fun. I've missed yeah. this. Yeah, Me too. the three musketeers. That's yep. right. <laughs> Stay tuned for next week because we're actually going to be breaking down the biggest uh, myths and misconceptions on machine embroidery. What could Ooh. that mean? Hmm. Don't want to miss that. <laughs> no. no. We'll talk about it next week. And of course, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, all the places where you're going to find all things Kimberbell. Until then, everyone, keep doing what you love and keep experiencing the joy of creativity. Bye-bye.